we present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... Jim and the Headless Piper. Muckleberry Hope, oh, change. Muckleberry Hope, change. And all stations to Jordan come hardy. Oh, <laughs> good, no, Jimmy. Come on, Pat. Come in, Father. Oh, this suitcase. Oh, poor Mum. I can't watch you struggling with your case like that. I'll see to it for you. Oh, thank you, son. Oh, you're welcome. Grandad, can you manage me Mum's case as well? <laughs> I'll carry the lady's suitcase. You carry a suitcase? I don't think you've enough strength to carry the label. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, don't be rude. Well, a right two weeks holiday this is going to be. Oh, that last train journey after we changed at Glasgow. What about the train journey? What about it? <laughs> I drank a whole bottle of lemonade and then found out there was no corridor. <laughs> See what you mean? Yeah, I'm not kidding. If that train had to stop for that sheep on the line. All right, all right. <laughs> Be quiet. Uh, uh, look, my man. Uh, we want to get to Lochside Cottage. Ah, uh, uh, in a minute. Tickets, please. You want to see your tickets? Look, here's our tickets. Now hurry up, Porter. It's cold in this drafty platform. Yeah, think about me, Grandad Porter. Oh, Mr. Porter, what can he do? He's only got his short kilt on and his legs are turning blue. <laughs> will you shut up? Uh, look, Porter, uh, will you please tell us how to get to lock? Side I walk in the place we lie. It belongs to some miserly old skin friend called Sinclair. What's that? <laughs> hey, 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 Mind hey. what you're saying. Hey, Sonny, what's the matter with the old man? He's his brother. <laughs> Who is? The miserly old skin flint, old Uncle Angus. We're going to stay with him and Aunt Flora. Well, I should imagine there should be room for you. Lockside Cottage used to be a pig farm. Oh. <laughs> pig farm? Aye, that's why they've got plenty of accommodation for their guests. Every pig stays now a bedroom. <laughs> it's the other way around at my pal Ozzy's. Every bedroom's a pig sty. Jimmy. Now look, my man. Will you just tell us how we get to my brother's cottage? How far is it? Well, the crow flies about five miles. Well, what time does the next crow fly? <laughs> five miles? How are we going to get there? No, well, today you're in luck. If you don't mind waiting a wee while, you can go by taxi. Oh, no. Well, that does it. Hey, hey, Sonny, what's the matter with the old man again? It's you mentioning to Axe. He. He'll have to pawn his bagpipes to pay the fares. <laughs> oh, you're a terrible boy. You're just what we want round here to liven the place up for a few days before the winter sets in. Winter? It's only early September. Oh, why, but you're in Highland country. You can. The seasons change very quickly. One day you're looking at a garden full of beautiful flowers, and the next you're shivering with a cold. Aye, I ken what you mean. <laughs> Red roses one day and blue noses the next. <laughs> I'd give for a nice cup of tea. What about you, Father? <laughs> well, it was something stronger than tea I was thinking about. Oh, where's Jimmy? You know, he's still up the road there looking for the taxi. Why didn't Uncle Angus come and meet us in his car? Because the porter was right. My brother's a mean old skinflint. He no doubt want the money for the petrol first. Oh, now, don't talk like that, Father. He and Aunt Flora are putting us up free of charge as their guests and Alfie and Susan as well. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Pat, but it's just this hanging about that's getting me down. Ah, oh, here's Jimmy now. 
Jimmy, Jimmy, is that the taxi down the road? Yes, Mama, I think it's the taxi. It's either that or it just been on wheels. Hey, look at it. It's stopped. It's run out of petrol. <laughs> or his elastic's broken. <laughs> and I'll bet he charges the earth for riding in that thing. Uh, look, I'll have a word with him. Uh, maybe he'll let me off cheap when he finds out that I'm a brother Scotsman. Oh, well, hurry up, Father. Uh, right. Oh, excuse me, Chuck, my friend. If it uh, wouldn't be taking you out of your way, would you mind running myself, my daughter, and my wee grandson here to the Lockside Cottage? Uh, I take it you can where it is. You're yeah, on our place, mate. Hop in. <laughs> hey, you're not a Scotty. You're a cocky. <laughs> Cockney. Yeah, that's right, mate. After a good old smoke, London. Oh, well, you've got here a bit quick. <laughs> the porter only phoned you half an hour ago. <laughs> Turn it up, son. I live here now. I'm retired. I used to be a London cabbie and I married a Scots girl who was a chambermaid in a London hotel. Yes, well, that's all very interesting, but can we please get on our way? Oh, yes, certainly, lady. If you don't mind waiting a bit. How long? Well, till the steam stops coming out from under me bonnet. <laughs> hey, Mr Cocky. Yeah, what is it, sonny? Does Ben Hur know you're using his chariot? <laughs> now, that'll do you, Jimmy. Come on, Pat, let's get in. Right, after you two. Mind the chickens. Oh, shut up, will you? It's all the hills, you know. My engine gets overheated. Holiday makers, are you? Yes, we've come here to see all the excitement and wild nightlife. <laughs> if my granddad can stand it, we're going to let him watch the street lamps being lit. <laughs> oh, be quiet, Jimmy. We're spending a few days with my brother and his wife. They live here in the summer. Oh, I ever told you about the headless piper. The headless piper? Yeah, he's supposed to haunt these parts. I've never seen him myself, but uh, he's a ghost with no head who strides over the moors playing his bagpipes. Oh, how can he play his bagpipes if he's got no head? Perhaps he mimes to a record. <laughs> Don't talk, silly. Headless Piper, indeed. Oh, look, come on, let's get on our way, Father. Yeah, right on, Gov. Oh, wait a minute, don't go yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah what, what, what's up, Sonny? My Uncle Angus has come for us in his car. There you are, Father. He's come, after all. And there you are. What were you doing in this taxi? We didn't know you were coming to the station, Uncle Angus. Didn't know? Well, why do you think I spent my hard-earned money on a four-penny start to write and tell you? Well, we never got any letter from you. Yeah, it should have been there yesterday morning. Well, it wasn't. The postman never came near our house. My mum's right. He didn't call, cos I met him in the street, and that's where he gave me the letter. Oh, heck. <laughs> I knew it. It's that boy's fault. Fourpence for a stamp right down the drain. Peter, aren't you going to chastise that grandson of yours? I'll chastise him all right with my walking stick. I think I'll be making a film with that ghost. The headless piper meets bottomless Jim. <laughs> Another cup of tea, Alfred. Um, yes, please, Auntie Angus. Um, you, you were saying, Uncle Flora? Oh, the man. <laughs> the man's putty. I, I, I was saying, I always bring these family heirlooms with me when I come up to the cottage, don't I, Flora? Aye, that you do, Angus. A bun, Alfred? Yeah, two lumps, please. I mean, yeah, yes, thank you. Give him a bun, Flora. A nanny. <laughs> I, Mr. Hall, are very valuable, these heirlooms, so why leave them behind in Glasgow to be stolen? I don't know why. What do you mean, why, you <laughs> blethering? Hey, Angus, Angus, now show him the jewelled dirk. <laughs> I doubt if he'll know what it is. Mr. Hall, do you know what a dirk is? Well, the only dirk I know has got another name. What's that? Bogart. <laughs> 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 it's a joke, that. <laughs> a joke. <laughs> this is the dirk in my hand, Mr. Hall. It's an offensive weapon for taking life. And I'm sorely tempted to use it. Now, now, that 
that'll do, Angus. Alfred is our guest. Alfred is a stupid... Bl- I mean... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry my temper got the better by Mr. Hall. Oh, that's all right. Uh, hey, Flora, are the others still upstairs in the room? Aye, Angus. They went upstairs to unpack their cases. Uh, Another ban, Alfred? Y- yes, please. <laughs> Oh, it's a lovely view from this window to that mountain across the lock. Now, here's your bun. Ah. That's snow on the top there. Is it? I thought it was icing sugar. <laughs> <laughs> on the mountain, not the bun, you adult-headed numbskull. <laughs> no, no, Angus. Hadn't you better go and put the family heirlooms away in a safe place? It's Mr. Hall who should be put away in a safe place. <laughs> Go and do it right away. Oh, is the, is the wee boy about? Who, Jimmy? No, no, he went out in the garden to play. Uh, uh, good. I'll find a safe hiding place while he's out. Oh, Uncle Angus, have you seen Alfie? Oh, don't mention that milk soap of... <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's in the living room there, the floor. Oh, thank you. Alfie, what have you been saying to Uncle Angus? Yeah, oh, it was a misunderstanding, Susan. I happened to mention the icing sugar on top of that mountain. What? <laughs> Alfie, what have you... A, a, a cup of tea, Susan. No, no, thanks, Auntie Flora. It's such a lovely evening, I thought I'd go out and get some fresh air. Aye, twilight can be very beautiful in these parts. Susan, why don't you take Alfie in the garden and show him Uncle Angus's late bloomers? Eh? <laughs> oh, so that's what he wears under his kilt. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind? Oh, I'm sorry, Susan, it slipped out. <laughs> yeah, but it's a funny one, isn't it? Yeah, I must remember it for Jimmy. Uncle Angus, where's Nick? No, that's not right. Oh, Alfie, come on. You can go through the French windows there. Thank you, Aunt Flora. Oh, isn't it lovely out here, Alfie? Look at those beautiful flowers. Yeah. <laughs> They're almost as beautiful as you, Susan. And look at those sheep over the fence, Alfie. Yeah, they're almost as beautiful as... I mean, um, <laughs> they are nice, aren't they? <laughs> you, you what, Susan? It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, the sheep. <laughs> How dare you call my sister a sheep? She looks more like a goat. <laughs> you do hiding behind bushes and making your stupid noises. What do you want? I want a word with the donkey. Alfie? Yeah? (laughs) I've just seen that taxi driver again, and he's just taken an important fare to the country hotel. What country hotel? I'm not talking to you. Alfie, you know the Forester's Inn, don't you? No, I didn't even know he'd been out. I know it. Well, who's the driver taking there? Fife Robertson. Well, who's he? On the telly, you know. No, I don't. Alfie, surely you know who Fife Robinson is? He was on television every night with Cliff Mitchellmore. Yeah, he, he was on tonight. Was he? Well, what's he doing in that pub in the village? <laughs> You've got it wrong, Alfie. Tonight is a programme. You, you are, Susan. Now, Alfie, surely you can remember tonight. No. Yeah, I can remember last night, but I can't remember tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Not tonight, 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 the programme. Susan, are you feeling all right? Oh, I'll tell him. Oh, no, I won't. By the time he understands about tonight, it'll be tomorrow night. <laughs> Did the taxi driver tell you? Listen, Fife Robertson told him he'd come to fix up a programme on the telly about the headless piper. Yeah. Fife Robertson. He told the taxi driver he's looking for local people who can tell him about the ghost. They'll be seen on the telly and they'll get two guineas each. Alfie, what am I going to do with your two guineas? <laughs> For the last time, can we go to see Mr. Fife Robertson? For the last time, no. Mr. Robertson is not to be disturbed. But it's important. Oh, that's what they all say. Everyone who wants his autograph. I don't want his autograph. I've got an important message about his program. From me dad. Uh, your dad? Yeah, Cliff Mitchellmore. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Mitchell.
Kilmore. <laughs> Uh, from the BBC. Yeah, we both are, aren't we, Walter? Walter! The army lad, you <laughs> uh, But, uh, Walter who? Walter Gabriel. <laughs> Walter, say mangle wurzels or something. Uh, mer- 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 wangle. W- wangling muzzle. M- muzzle. Wurzles. Oh, away with you. That's not Walter Gabriel's voice. Oh, no, not now. It's his day off. <laughs> anyway, we'll go up and see our friend Fifey then, eh? Well, okay. uh, you can't see him upstairs now anyway But I've told you He's just away out the front door this minute What? Oh, you, you mean that bloke who just passed me? I thought I recognised his beard Oh, you nit Come on, we've got to catch him Oh, hey, before you go, could I have your autograph, please, Mr Gabriel? Oh, he, he can't write <laughs> But he'll get one of his pigs to send you a litter <laughs> Where did he get that one out of a Christmas cracker? Hey, there he is. Paul Robertson. On the corner. But he's coming back this way. Right now, just leave him to me. What, what, what are you going to do? Get him back to the cottage to meet everybody and put us all on the jelly. He won't bother with us. You'll be seeing all the important people in the village. You know, the, the council and the vicar and all that. He wants to meet somebody who's seen the ghost of the headless piper face to face. Oh, face to neck. <laughs> Somebody who heard the terrible noise of the pipes and has never got over the shock. Who's that? You. <laughs> Before you saw the piper, you were Sir Walter MacWalter. Now you're Daft Wally. <laughs> I can't pretend I'm crackers. You don't have to pretend. <laughs> I told you. I mean, leave it to me. Quite is here. Um, <coughs> excuse me, the new. Are uh, you know the hen who's on the Sesonite Deli, Mr. Fife Robertson? Oh, oh, well, my name is Fife Robertson, and I am on the television, if that's what you mean. Oh, well, I, uh, I'll get it with you. You're on the night, the new, tonight, the new, the new, the next news, tomorrow, the new. I don't understand. I've come to tell you about the headless piper and I've brought a witness, Daff Wally, here. <laughs> He's seen the terrible monster floating across the bob, blowing the pipes through his ear holes. <laughs> his ear holes? Ah, well, he's got no head, you can. Has he, Wally? Wally? Damn it! <laughs> no, 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 no head, but he'd. Surely the paper's a myth. No, it's a man. No. <laughs> oh, I think no, no, I saw him. Oh, floating on the dog, the bog. But I want you to come and meet my uncle. He kens all about the piper. He and my grandfather see him every Saturday night. After closing time. <laughs> your uncle, now who might your uncle be? My uncle kens all about the history of Scotland. He has a suitcase full of priceless treasures from olden times. Priceless treasures, you say? Aye, and he's a very important man. Who is he, then? Angus Sinclair, the Laird of Kilcranky. <laughs> Mr. Robertson, your uncle was the laird of Killy Cranky. <laughs> Aye, and that I owned the Rose and Crown. I didn't say you owned it, I said you lived in it. <laughs> now look here, my lad. Now, now, Peter, it's just his fun. Anyway, it worked. Five Robertson's here and we'll all be on the telly at two guineas a time. He hasn't said he'll use any of us yet. He will by the time he's finished drinking Uncle Angus's whiskey in the front room. <laughs> no, no, Jimmy. Uncle Angus is just showing Mr. Robertson the family heirlooms. For an hour? It's like when my granddad took Tommy Twig into our front room to look at his old photographs. Well, we did look at the photographs. Yeah, but by the time he came out, you couldn't see the door. <laughs> I'll give you a smack in a minute. Hear you. Yeah, and if he doesn't hear me, Grandad, he'll hear me. You know how I yell when I get smacked. All right. 
But just wait until he's gone, my boy. What's Jimmy been up to now? Oh, why, what he's always up to, mischief. Oh, I'm going to get a, get a bit of fresh air. No, no, Jimmy, you shouldn't tease your grandfather like that. Just you watch your step or you'll be spending the rest of your holiday sitting on a cushion. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll have to save me jokes for the telly. Aunt Flora, has your clock stopped? Because according to my tummy, it's tea time. <laughs> Jimmy. Ah, your tummy's right, son. But I was waiting to find out if Mr. Robertson was staying for tea. Oh, yes, Flora. Angus said to tell you Mr. Robertson would have tea with us. Oh, my word, Pat. Fancy having a television celebrity staying for tea. You'll have another one tomorrow. <laughs> Who? Me. <laughs> After they see me on the telly in a kilt, I'll have my own series. <laughs> the Adventures of Bonnie Prince Jim. <laughs> well, I wouldn't start signing autographs yet because I don't think Five Robertson's going to discover you. You what? You mean he's not having us on his programme after all? Oh, yes, yes. He says Grandad and Uncle Angus are just what he wants. Authentic Highland characters, he called them. But I don't think he's interested in you and Alfie. Even though you did tell him how Alfie's hair turned white the night you saw the headless piper playing bowls with his head. <laughs> well, of all the rotten twists. You mean he's turning me down with all my talent and he's using me granddad and Uncle Angus? That's what he said. <laughs> oh, what's he putting on? A knobbly knees competition? <laughs> Don't you be cheeky. After you, Mr. Robertson. No, no, my name's Fife. <laughs> right you are, Fife. Uh, sit you down there. Yes, yes, sit down and, and I'll bring the tea, sir. I'll just be a few minutes making some toasted scones. I'll come and give you a hand, Flora. Mr Robertson, it's no good just having two people on your show. You want lots of them, dozens. Hey, but there's not enough money for dozens of people. Ah, that's where I can help you. We Jimmy McClitheroe, the laddie with a hundred voices. Just sit back and get ready to clap. What are you on about, boy? Well, if I do all my voices, I'll be on about two hours. <laughs> First, Robbie Burns. I'll watch some poor the gift the gears to see yourselves as other seers. Before we see them as seers, ourselves see them seeing us. You see what I mean? That's Robbie Burns. What idiot told you that? Your brother. You're chicken. <laughs> Second impression, Chick Murray. <clears throat> Good evening. A funny thing happened to me on the way to the theatre. <laughs> I always say that, whether it did or not. <laughs> because it's not likely that anybody in the audience was where I was when the funny thing happened that didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but it did. I met Jimmy Clitheroe. Hold your tongue, boy. I can't, it's slippery. <laughs> Oh, it's no good, my boy. Mr. Robertson doesn't want you. No, I'm terribly sorry, but there's no way I can fit you into the programme. My 25th impression. <laughs> there was a soldier, a Scottish soldier, who started out to roam, but left his kilt at home. <laughs> the program. Oh, smashing. Oh, I give up. Oh, I'm sorry we were so long, but I burnt the first lot of scones. Oh, no, 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 it was my fault, Flora. Oh, no. Good old man, he just timed it right. Mr. Robertson's changed his mind. You mean he was brainwashed, you young scallywag? Mind you, I still have some other people to audition tomorrow morning at my hotel. Oh, uh, well, they'll have to come here for you. Um, you're staying here at Indian Flora. Well, uh, yes, yes, by all means. Well, I don't like to impose on anybody. Oh, there's plenty of room. You can take your pick. With four pigsties that haven't been used yet. <laughs> Mr. Robertson's bag. Yes. You've got his room key, haven't you? Of course I have. And he told you to tell the clerk that he'll be staying here tonight. Remember? Yes, I remember. Well, forget it. You what? 
We don't want anybody coming round here in the morning for an audition, so don't tell the clerk anything. Just go in the back way, grab the bag and sneak out. Yeah, but, 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 Mr. Robertson... Alfie, if you do this right, I'll get you on the programme as well as me. Yeah, will you? Hey, but Mr. Robertson said my accent was no good. The headless piper hasn't got an accent. <laughs> and I've decided he's going to appear. <laughs> Jimmy. Well, how's the television star this morning? Morning, Straggy Neck. <laughs> now, don't be jealous. I'll get you on the telly. Advertising pork sausages. <laughs> you look good with an apple stuck in your mouth. All right, all right. Don't start trouble before breakfast. Oh, he doesn't bother me. Oh, yes, breakfast. If I'm going to be a Scotch lad in this television show, I'd better have two helpings of porridge, Aunt Flora. Well, we're waiting for Mr. Robertson to get back first. He wanted to photograph the dawn over the moors. That's why he was going out about 5.30 this morning. Oh, such a nice man. He insisted on having the alarm clock so as not to disturb me. Yeah, hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm late, but I had to shave with my new electric razor because I couldn't yesterday without the plug. But you haven't shaved. No, no. I, I found my plug now, but my razor is gone. So you'll have to excuse me having my beard for breakfast. You want milk and sugar on it? Yes, that'll be <laughs> Shut up. That'll be Mr. Robertson now. I'll let him in. I want to tell him how I want my show produced. Oh, we're never going to hear the end of this TV programme. Oh, well, the boy's bound to be excited. Anyway, weren't you in it as well? Jimmy said he'd arranged it. <laughs> oh, aye. If I was willing to have my head cut off. Come in then, Constable. Uh, what's Mr. Robertson? Uh, good morning, everyone. Well, he's out, uh, but he shouldn't be long, Constable. Maybe longer than you think, madam. Um, I understand Mr. Angus Sinclair has some valuable heirlooms here. Aye, that's right. They're in the front room in a case. Uh, would you mind getting them, please, madam? Not at all. I'll just be a moment. Does Mr. Robertson want them? Because he said he was glad I mentioned them. Said he wouldn't have liked to have missed them. Is anything the matter, Constable? We'll see. Thank God. All the heirlooms have gone. The case is open with the locks broken. Oh, Angus will have a fit. Well, that's what I was afraid of. What do you mean? Well, we've just had word from Glasgow about the man who stayed here last night. Mr. Robertson? Oh, no, no, no. He's, uh, he's somebody who's going around impersonating Fife Robertson. What? Yes, robbing houses, bilking hotels, taking money from anyone who believes his story. Oh, heck, and I was the one who brought... Oh, heck... But um, this time we've got something new to go on. What do you mean, something new? Well, this time he had an accomplice. Somebody sneaked into his hotel room and took his bag away for him, loaded with hotel silver, too. I thought it was heavy. I mean... <laughs> it, it must have been. Oh, I... But what, what, what are we going to do, Jimmy? Get after him. You take the high road and I'll take the low road. <laughs> Because if we don't find Five Robertson tonight, our next tonight will be in hospital. Those involved with the Clitheroe Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, and Diana Day as Susan. With John Laurie, Molly Weir, John Graham, W.H.D. Joss, and Brian Truman. The man who impersonated Fife Robertson was Mike Yarwood. The recorded program was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. Well, it was all right in the end, because we didn't know that the crook had pinched off his motorbike, and he didn't know that it was nearly out of petrol. <laughs> Tried to run across the marsh and fell in a bog. He had to pull him up by his beard. They got Uncle Angus's stuff back, so I'm all right. And they never found his accomplice, so Alf is.